The next one we look at is the reaction between chlorine and aqueous iodide ions. So just have a look in the top right hand corner there and ask yourself, can chlorine take this electron away from the iodide ion? Just put a small amount of potassium iodide solution into the test tube there. I've got some chlorine water already in this dropper. Let's just put that in. You can see it's changed colour, so there's been a reaction. Obviously, the chlorine has taken that electron and it's obviously displaced the iodine. We'll put some cyclohexane in to see the true colour of the halogen that's in this test tube. So hopefully you can make out against the white background of the whiteboard. We've got this nice violet or purpley colour inside this top layer, the cyclohexane layer, the, the non-polar layer. So there's your two colours. So we've got iodine in this test tube. Iodine's purple. So when it's in aqueous conditions, it's kind of a brown colour. And it dissolves fully into the cyclohexane non-polar layer. And we see its true purple colour. So there's confirmation that we've got iodine in this test tube. So there's the equation completed with the colour changes. So we've got the chlorine turning into chloride, so it's accepted that electron. The iodide being turned into iodine, so it's lost the electron. So this is the oxidation process. This is the reduction process. Chlorine's acting as the oxidising agent because it's pulling this electron off the I minus. Why does that happen? Chlorine's higher up the group than iodine, so it's got a smaller atomic radius, fewer shells, therefore less shielding, therefore greater attraction for this electron. And there's your colours. So in aqueous conditions, iodine's a kind of orangey brown colour. If I just show you this bottle of iodine solution, you can see there's the colour of iodine in solution. But in cyclohexane, it dissolves completely in cyclohexane, and so we've got that nice purple colour there. The next one we'll look at is the reaction between bromine and aqueous iodide ions. So look at the relative positions in the group and see if you can predict what's going to happen. Think about colours in aqueous solution and also in cyclohexane. And also try and think if there is a reaction, why does it take place? If there isn't a reaction, why isn't there? I've got some bromine water in the test tube. So that's why I've got this yellow colour. I haven't added the iodide yet. So let's get the iodide solution in. And there's been a colour change. So there's been a reaction takes place. So it's got a sort of not a very nice browny sort of black colour. But there's definitely been a reaction. So obviously um, the bromine has displaced the iodine. We'll put some cyclohexane in to see if we can see the displaced halogen more clearly. We'll just give that a shake. And I think you can see the purple colour appearing. So that's confirmation that we've definitely got iodine inside that test tube. We didn't have iodine at the start. We had iodide. And so the iodine has been displaced. So here's the reaction equation now. So the bromine has been changed to bromide. And the iodide has been converted to iodine. So the reduction process. We've got an oxidation number of zero. To minus one so that's a drop in oxidation number and it's done that by gaining an electron so it's been reduced and here's the oxidation process minus one up to zero so it's obviously lost an electron for that change to take place bromine's the oxidizing agent because it's taken this electron away from the iodide so bromine is obviously able to oxidise I- to I2. And again, look at the relative positions in the periodic table. Bromine is higher up the group than iodine, so it's going to have a smaller atomic radius, fewer shells, less shielding, greater attraction 
for this electron. We'll finish with this one. I'm not going to do every possible combination, but we'll just do this one to finish. We've got iodine, and we're going to react that with the aqueous chloride ions. So, will there be a reaction? If so, why? Will there not be a reaction? If not, why not? Colours, you'd expect, and some reasons as well. Put the iodine into the test tube. I've got my chloride ions inside the dropper. Let's put them in and see if anything happens. It doesn't look like anything's happened. There's certainly no dramatic colour change. So what we need to do is add some cyclohexane to see which halogens in this test tube. So just put that in, give it a shake, and hopefully you can see the purple colour is appearing, which is confirmation that we've got iodine, I2, in that test tube. We started with I2, we've still got I2, and so therefore there's been no reaction. So why, why has there not been a reaction? Well, can iodine take the electron from the chloride? Let's look at their relative positions in the group. Chlorine's higher up, it's got that smaller radius, it's got fewer shells, it's got greater attraction for the electron. So the chloride ion is holding onto this electron much more strongly than iodine's able to pull it away. And so iodine is unable to oxidize that chloride to chlorine, and so we didn't get any change.